Sometime around noon on July 1st of 1863, Confederate Generals Richard Ewell and Robert Rhodes arrived here on Oak Hill. Both of these men were under orders from Robert E. Lee not to bring on a fight should they encounter the enemy. But earlier that morning, another Confederate general named Henry Heath did exactly that. Heath had advanced his division from Cashtown. He had encountered the advance of the Union Army to the west of Gettysburg, and he was driven back. In fact, it was the sound of this combat that would lead Robert Rhodes to bring his 8,000 men here to Oak Hill. Yet when they arrived, they discovered that Heath had been repulsed. But they were looking at an inviting target. Just to their south was the exposed right flank of the 1st Army Corps. Suddenly, to their left, deploying through the streets of Gettysburg, soldiers of the 11th Corps began to arrive and take up position. Rhodes and Ewell believed that they were about to come under assault, and they decided that they better strike first. The attacks that followed, however, were piecemeal, haphazard, ill-coordinated, and ill-led. In fact, the first two brigades that went forward, Edward O'Neill's Alabamians and Alfred Iverson's North Carolinians, they went forward without their commanders, O'Neill and Iverson choosing to remain in the rear. Was it necessary for a leader to always be at the front? Both of these brigades encountered a much stronger Union force than they had anticipated. Would the presence of O'Neill or Iverson at the front made a difference at all?